Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Millbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming related questions, and then I'll give my humble opinion on them. To get the formalities out of the way real quick, if you'd like to submit your own question that can be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. The first question today comes from Ross, and it is, do you think that Ubisoft should add Team Deathmatch into Rainbow Six Siege? So I realize a lot of people's initial reaction to this is probably absolutely not, but I was talking to some friends and Macy J, for example, and he brought up a really good point that this actually could have some benefits. One of them being is that this could just simply be a good way to practice against other players. One of, not necessarily the downsides of Rainbow Six Siege, but more of the reality is that if you want to play as a certain operator or you want to practice with a specific weapon, uh, it takes a while to actually get comfortable with said weapon. You could play for an hour, play with that operator a half a dozen times, maybe get 10 kills total, and that's about it. It's like, there's not a lot of opportunity to actually have player interaction between each other. And so if they did decide to add in Team Deathmatch, and we'll get to the issues here in a second, I'm not 100% sold on this just yet, but if they did decide to add in this mode, it'd be a great way to practice and kind of just get warmed up before you jump into ranked. Just like in CSGO, play a couple of matches with a few operators, get comfortable, and then jump on in. In. I think a lot of people would find value in that. Another great benefit of this is that it could just simply be a great way at getting newer players involved for the very first time. Let's be honest, Rainbow Six Siege can be pretty intimidating. Only having one life per round means that if you have no idea what's going on, you're probably going to be at the spawn screen or waiting for your team to end the round. And if that happens over and over and over again, you never really feel like you're getting a handle on the game. Yes, you can learn from your teammates, like there is some knowledge being gained from that. Uh, but just in general, I know a lot of people started Siege and then stopped just because it was too frustrating. But if they did have a game mode like TDM, which is in basically every other FPS game, uh, that could ease them into what Rainbow Six Siege is all about. Get them comfortable with the controls. They can figure out the weapon mechanics so that when they do jump on over into ranked, they're in a much better position. That could also be a nice benefit of adding in this mode. Now, the downsides of introducing something like this is that, first of all, it would fracture the community a little bit. If you now have an extra mode that people can queue into, that's going to, of course, split the player base, which is going to extend the queues of every single one of these game modes, casual, ranked, and of course, TDM. And so those queue times might be a little bit longer. Now, I don't know how large the player base is currently, but it keeps growing every single season. So we might be in a position where that's no longer a problem and queue times will be very quick, but it's kind of hard to say. On top of that, I feel like this would be very difficult for them to actually make even relatively well balanced. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's just supposed to be TDM, it's supposed to be ultra casual, uh, but how do you balance the map accordingly? Do you allow destruction? If you do allow destruction, how how quick are the matches? If people are constantly spawning on in and they're able to throw their impact nades all over the place, is the map just going to just disappear in front of everyone's eyes and there's going to be nowhere to hide anymore? Like, that's one issue. How do you deal with the spawn system? Are people going to be spawning inside, outside of the building? How do you deal with spawn campers? And really, what is the gameplay going to be looking like? There isn't that offense and defense dynamic anymore. There's no incentive for you to really have to move around the map. And so wouldn't it be more advantageous for everyone just to kind to sit still and camp if you running out in the open you could get hit from literally anywhere like there is no offense and defensive spot there isn't that normal locations that people could be at they could be literally anywhere so there's going to be very little incentive for you to move around so the game mode itself could be very very campy which i don't know if would be all that enjoyable and so all in all, I'm not really entirely sure about TDM. On the one hand, I like the idea of having a mode that would allow me to practice and get warmed up or just simply goof around with friends. Like that would be amazing. But on the other, I don't even know if the mode would be fun just simply because of the way that Rainbow Six Siege works and the mechanics that are already in place. And so let me know what you guys think. Do you think that this would be a good addition? Do you think that they shouldn't waste their time? Give me your guys' thoughts down below. The next question comes from Charlie and it is, what are your thoughts on buffing Castle so that Kaid's Electro Claw would also electrify Castle Barricades, viable or overpowered? 
Honestly, I think this would be a pretty good upgrade for him and doesn't seem too unreasonable. There are already a ridiculous amount of ways to deal with his barricades. Castle has, I think, the most counters in Rainbow Six Siege. You've got the operators that can take it out from a distance, like Zofia and Ash. You, of course, have Sledge, who can just simply one-shot it. You've got Fuse, and this actually would be a great counter to Fuse, finally. Castle, for whatever reason, doesn't counter Fuse's gadget. This would finally do that. It would electrify it. Really, the only big effect that this would have on a match is if you're going against someone who has a breaching charge or doesn't have one and needs to melee the barricade. If they need to melee it, it's now going to deter them a little bit more because of course they're going to take a little bit of shock damage. It isn't going to be a significant amount, but it could be enough to deter them from trying to go from that route. If they want to put a breaching charge, then of course they need to take out the Kayed's gadget either with a Thatcher or with a Twitch, which is going to use one of those resources for the offensive team. The only thing I can maybe think of is that this gives too much defensive capabilities if they're running like a Kayed and a Bandit. If they have the Bandit, or let's say even a Mute into the mix, they reinforce every single one of the walls either with the Bandit battery or the Mute jammer, and then you have Kayed, you know, reinforcing the the castle barricades. But even then, like, I don't think that is something that wouldn't be insurmountable, especially with the operators that are in the meta right now. Like, you're always going against Sledge, Ash, Sophia. Like, these are things that you see constantly. And so I, I just don't think that this would be something that would be completely overpowered if this was in the arsenal for the defensive team. And so in general, I think that this is a really interesting idea. I think at the end of the day, all that Ubisoft really needs to do is rework this operator. They've been hinting at it, they've been teasing about it for quite some time, but they haven't followed through. But until then, this could be a cool way at giving him a little bit of an upgrade, which I don't think is too unreasonable, but of course that is just my two cents. The next question comes from Philip, and it is, we've talked about some Battlefield 5 problems recently, and I've been wondering how much you would recommend the game. I've never been into Battlefield games, but I've been considering picking this one up, but I'm unsure as of right now. Well, for someone who's never played the Battlefield series, it's difficult to recommend because I don't really have a bearing or a kind of comparison that I can give you. If you are someone that's played, let's say, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, for example, and you enjoyed those, you're probably going to get a lot of enjoyment out of Battlefield 5. I can't guarantee that, but they do feel very similar. There are problems with it, though. There are bugs, there are glitches, some people would even argue that there is a lack of content. Personally, I think they've done a reasonably good job with the content that's in the game right now, and they've been continuing to add more. Just in the last couple of weeks, they've introduced four new weapons. Another thing I really enjoy about the game is that most of the weapons actually feel very unique and distinctive and have a different playstyle. The Medic is a bit of an exception here. Most of their weapons feel very samey, but when I'm playing as uh, the support, for example, they've got a lot of different weapon variety that has a different role and has a different feel. A lot of past Battlefield games struggled with this. Even something that I loved about Battlefield 4 was that many of the weapons really felt identical. Just a slightly different rounds per minute output, and that was about it. One thing I think that DICE has excelled at with Battlefield 5 is that not only have they made a lot of the weapons just fun to use, I'm excited to try out different weapons because of their different playstyle, but they also feel distinctive from all of the others. So I think that's one thing that is really appealing about Battlefield 5. One thing I will say that isn't necessarily a negative, but something you should be aware of, is that this is a more team-oriented Battlefield 5. You need to stick together, and this is a lot more enjoyable with friends. You can play solo, but there are a lot of times where you just feel like you're constantly trying to get more health and rounds from teammates that just don't seem to want to help you. It's not the end of the world because you will find random players that are team oriented and because the game incentivizes that team play more, I think it's better in this than past Battlefield games, but that is one thing that you should be wary of if you do plan to play by yourself and only by yourself with no friends. Overall though, my main advice is that if you are still on the fence about picking it up and you can't find a deal for it, is just simply wait a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then reassess. I really feel like the next couple of months are going to be very telling to see how much support this game gets from DICE. If they continue to update it, uh, the bugs and the glitches get solved, the netcode starts to improve, and they add in a lot more content in the form of maps and new weapons, then I would say, yeah, this game has the potential. I really do believe that this game has a lot of potential to be a fantastic Battlefield game, but of course, only time will tell. And so that would be my advice. The next question comes from Thomas and it is, do you think that Ubisoft should bring back the report suspicious behavior option? Toxic behavior is a broad term and in my opinion is less harmful than outright cheating. 
Well, it's to my understanding, because I heard this from one of the developers, that if you do report someone for toxic behavior, it's basically reporting them for cheating as well. It's kind of a catch-all. So they could be saying something horrible in chat, or they could just outright be using a third-party software to get an edge against everyone else. If you report them using that button, uh, it's going to go into the system, and someone's going to look into what the issue is. You would think, though, that if they simply gave players more options and categories to specify what the problem is, that that would make it easier on the Ubisoft employees that are trying to figure out what's going on. So instead of seeing, hey, this account is flagged, what's the reason? They could be, oh, they were reported for toxic behavior, or oh, suspicious behavior, and then go from there. One nice benefit of this too, would that it wouldn't cause as much confusion amongst the player base. I know a lot of people that don't know what to do when they go against someone who is clearly cheating because they don't realize that reporting someone for toxic behavior is reporting them for cheating. If there was a clear distinction between the two, people might be more likely to actually make those reports instead of just getting confused and thinking that it's not even an option. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's episode of Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Would you like to see TDM introduced in a Rainbow Six Siege? Why or why not? Let me know down below. As always, if you'd like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. But until tomorrow guys, have a good one and take it easy.